But one thing for certain... It will be fun. It will be fun. After a very rocky season 1, the final season 2 has kicked off with its own sets of difficulties and challenges. To help you reach Diamond without having to sweat your tears out, I've built a straightforward tips guide that high-ranking players wish they could keep for themselves. Whether you're starting the game for the first time, a 500 hours veteran, or somewhere in between, I guarantee you that you will learn something by the end of the video. So make sure to stay until the end. No time to waste, let's get into the video. General tips for Season 2 Dematerializer now that the dematerializer is part of the game, tracking player positioning has never been this important. The concept of flanking is much more important and or present. Learn to position yourself vertically, not to be caught off guard. Medics. Healing and respawning has been at the center of the finals since the beta, but it is obvious with the changes brought by Season 2 that Embark is trying to rock the boat by making unexpected changes to the support aspect of the game. Even if, at high ranks, the meta is still revolving around 2 mid-class plus 1 heavy, the concept of healing is a bit less present than it used to. We more often see 1 medic plus 1 dematerializer user. It is vital to time your attacks to the dot and remain aware of your team's health at all times if you want to avoid an instant team wipe. Verticality with flanking is a real risk in the current meta and you should take in consideration that the healer is probably going to have to focus on healing on the tank most of the time. Support role. The support role should now be considered as a full-time job. If you enter with a healing beam, you need to fully dedicate your time to healing. If you play heavy, your role is to be a frontline shield and a damage bruiser rather than killer. This seems to be getting more and more true as time goes by, as we are seeing Embark nerf the SA-1216 over and over, reducing its ability to be a murderous weapon, even if it is still right now on the S tier of the finals weapon list. For the light class, the accent is still put on disrupting defenses and enemy shield, with the recent buff of the glitch grenade and the gateway grenade. Ranking System the ranking system is being reworked. Since everyone is being thrown back to placement matches and that the placement matches themselves do not precisely set players on an adequate rank, the beginning of the season can be difficult to apprehend. For season 1 lower ranks, waiting a few weeks before starting their season can help avoid being put in matches with smurf-like players. On top of that, the rank up or down system is quite unclear with the removal of the progression bar rendering the concept of climbing the ladder quite frustrating at the moment. Explosive nerfs. Season 1 was built around the concept of explosives with high damaging C4s, breach charges, strong RPGs and the infamous nukes. Season 2 seems to have brought doom to the explosive era of the finals. With a strong nerf to explosive splash damage on all types of exploding weapons, the wobble effect to any attachments including nukes, but not limited to, and the division by two of the number of C4s a heavy can put down at once, we can consider that Embark is trying to put more emphasis on team builds and actions rather than solo damaging. Loadout skills for Season 2 Anti-Gravity the anti-gravity is far better than expected. The unforeseen strong effect, beyond the obvious possibility with the verticality aspect of the tool, is that it slows players traps in its ray of action. This can immobilize a player or even up to an entire team because of the radius of the action. Because the effect comes from under, it can take up to a second or a couple of seconds for a player to realize he has been trapped into an anti-gravity grenade, meaning that the attacking player will have a strong position over its victim to start taking a good chunk out of the player health. Meta Team Composition As it stands, the team loadout with one heavy and its mesh shield, plus SA-1216, one mid-class with a dematerializer, and the second mid-class with the healing beam is completely broken and far beyond any other option. This enables a strong defensive sync for teams stacking together, but also a very strong flanking offensive side to it, with the dematerializer bringing a new level of complexity to the attacks that a team can perform quite simply. Paced respawn. Defibrillators do not instantly respawn anymore. That was surely intended as a nerf, but the reality is quite different and would arguably end up as a shadow buff of the mid-class. While the respawn is loading, for a length of 3 seconds in total, the player has the possibility to look around freely. This fact, allied to the 1 second immunity you get after reappearing, makes for a great source of intel to the rest of the team, but also a much stronger comeback than what respawning was for Season 1. 
Also, we have seen bugs emerge with some already having been fixed like the possibility for heavies to use their shields while on the 3 seconds loading or jump pads being able to be placed too. Dehacking. The dematerializer can remove a wall but also replace it. While the first one is obviously strong, the second can sometimes be thought as a secondary. In reality, the possibility to put the wall back can basically be considered as a second specialization or gadget and should be used as such. You can make crazy cash out steals, escapes or even attacks by cancelling your wall hack or even the ones that the enemies are using and completely break their momentum. Gateway Grenades These grenades, while debatably not as good as one would have expected watching the trailer or taking experience from other games like Apex, holds a secret trick. For some unconscious reason, once a gateway is opened, a lot of players will feel the will to try using it, thinking they will have a strong chance at flanking the enemy team with it. If positioned smartly by the defending team, this gadget can completely trick an attacking team into chaos by making them fall off an unexpected hole or positioning the exit at a very disadvantageous point. Objective Tactics Starting Cash Outs you might have realized that some teams wait for a weird amount of time before inserting the cash boxes into the cash outs. This is because the respawn engine calculates where to respawn a wipe team based on what is happening on the map at the time of respawn. If a cash out has just started and the team is respawned a few seconds later, the engine will respawn the team roughly 100 meters away from the point. If on the other side, you wait for the team to be respawned before putting the cash out, the engine will either respawn the team on another cash out point if there is another one active, or at a very far point from the cash out objective points, usually between 200 and 250 meters away. Respawn points. This is seemingly still being reworked, so this point might quickly become irrelevant, but there are currently two to three respawn points per objective points. Make sure to learn them all to position your teammates correctly while defending an objective, not to let any other team creep up on you and wreck your defenses before you even realize what is happening. In higher ranks, you can expect players to know ahead of time where you will respawn depending on the map layout and the actions underway at the time of respawn. Cash out time. A full unlocking of the cache in the cache out takes up to 130 seconds. If you wait for the last second of a round, you will shorten the cache out to the maximum time of the extra time, which is 60 seconds, meaning that you can reduce the time for the unlocking from 130 seconds to 61. On top of that, the loading of the objective that is common to everyone will look the same whether it is 130 seconds or 61. The only difference is that the loading will go faster. This can catch an enemy attacking team off guard and give your team a great edge to cash out at the last minute. Steal Priority This one might seem obvious, but when there is nearly no time left, many teams make the mistake to rush for the steal. You need to make sure that the enemy team is dead or at least fully occupied before attempting a steal. Winging it, thinking, what if they don't pay attention, has a very low chance of success and this rate will keep growing down the older the game gets because players are accumulating experience and have now a strong understanding of how to defend objectives. Risk Aversion Always keep track of how much money you have already cashed out. Depending on the amount, risky steal attempts can actually be worth wiping for. For example, if your team has cashed out 10,000 or less by the late game, a full team wipe would only cost around 3,000. If your team has cashed out 30,000, a team wipe would cost 10,000 or above, meaning that your team would go back down to a total of 20,000. At that point, if the third or fourth position team starts a last minute cash out and validates it, you will no longer be on the first or second position and will surely be eliminated. Skill tips for season two. Recoil is buffed. Except for the Lewis gun and the XP-54, most guns have seen some form of recoil stabilization for Season 2, especially at high distances. Using full clip shooting via auto-firing is much more reliable and controllable now. Class Perks Now that players all have some form of experience in the game, it is no longer possible to hope to win without exploiting the strength of each class. For example, move around maps faster by tilting jump pads with the mid-class, as a light class, separate team defenses by letting your team engage in attack and flanking the weakest member of the defending team. As a heavy, understand which part of which building will destroy what and use that to create chaos on the battlefield. 
this channel is here to help. Subscribing to the channel is the best way to keep getting updates, tips, tricks and high level insights on the finals. You will not regret it. Player in-game mentality. As the player skill levels continues to ramp up, your mentality in-game will take more and more importance. Foster team cooperation rather than pointing the finger at the weakest link. Always play with your microphone on, or at least with the communication channels on so that you can hear your teammates, and use voice and command ping smartly. Proper commands can elevate a team's gameplay by entire levels very easily. Here is a simple example. Imagine you get killed, decide to stay quiet. By default, your teammate will normally try to come and respawn you. In that scenario, his chances of getting killed are quite high as you have not provided the information you privately had access to. If you simply tell him where the enemy is after your death, he can come up with a wiser plan to support you and get his team back on track. Double sidestep movement technique. One side slide followed by another side slide on the opposite direction while reloading is a great high level skill to master. Most players will not have the reflexes or the tracking aptitudes to hit you with enough bullets to kill you. Once they have emptied their mag, yours will just have been refilled giving you the offensive and a strong chance to win the fight. And that is it for this time. I hope you found this video interesting and insightful. What tip would you have liked to see on that list that we could have forgotten? Don't hesitate to share your knowledge with all the others in the comment section. The goal is to keep growing all together to reach new heights. If you did enjoy it and want to show your support, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. At this point, the only thing left to say is that I will see you on the next one.